My friends, today I'm going to take you through a quick overview of all of what I consider the coolest aspects of Fantasy Grounds. This is not going to be a tutorial. It's mostly just going to show you what is possible and just give you an idea of what Fantasy Grounds is and what it can do, what its capabilities are. All of the data that's inside of these books, whether it's the statistics for monsters or the stats for items, tables, and spells, these are all going to populate these data sets, what I'm going to call categories or buttons. So for example, all of the NPCs. Um, so you can see that we have a list of all of the NPCs from Monster Manual, Morden Kanan, Volos. They're all in here. There are several filters that you can use to quickly find the ones you're looking for or simply do a search. So we're looking for a white dragon. There we have it. This is just an example of what you can do for all of these. So that holds true. You have all of your, uh, all of the items, be they magic or regular. Yeah, all of that data is populated in these categories. So you can purchase pre-made modules. I'm gonna give you a peek at homebrew campaign. You can format this any way that you want. For me, I like to just have a starting table of contents that's kind of broken up so that I can quickly get to whatever I'm looking for. Here's the world map. Uh, so let's say, for example, that we just went to the city of Sarsia. Any, any window that you see that looks like this, this is a story entry. All of these little red dragon heads, these are links. You can place them inside of story entries. You can throw them down onto images. So for example, here, if we're going to open up this Sarsia link, here we have it. We have uh, any of the information that we want to put in this story tab on Sarsia. So for me, I have handouts. By the way, all of these links, these links can be from any sort of data within all of these categories. So for example, we have images, such as this handout of what Sarsia looks like story entries. So for example, a quest line from this faction. So some details on the faction, additional handouts for NPCs, and then the link to their quest line. So this is all stuff that you can fill in by hand or copy and paste or um, roll on tables and paste into it. And then you can have links to, for example, a map, you can have maps that link to other maps, um, or for example, you can also have encounters. Um, so any of these NPCs, you can pull these NPCs over, throw them into encounters, and then have those encounters ready to go for a fight, which I'll demonstrate very soon. So let's say that I want my sewer map. All that I did is I type in sewer, so one of the great things about Fantasy Grounds Unity is that you can put any images that you want into uh, an image entry. And they can basically expand as large as your system can handle. Um, you can also build your own maps. So this is obviously a completed map. But you can use map tokens to basically build, uh, build your map one step at a time. And there are lots of great tools um, for building building a map step by step. Some some cool upgrades here. Line of sight. You can build line of sight uh, on top of images, or Fantasy Grounds actually has map tiles that have line of sight built into them. Uh, so what does line of sight mean? All right, let's uh, let's get some players and throw them down on the map. All right, so I'm going to enable line of sight. You can see everything's gone dark. That means that the players are no longer able to see this. I'm going to open up the combat tracker, throw some players down on the map, and now we can see what the players can see. And as they move, you can see how their line of sight changes. And there's more than just this simple option for line of sight. Um, there is also terrain and doorways. So I don't have any terrain, but to give you an idea of how this doorway works, um, 
So we can see the blue is right there. That means that it's a doorway. We can move up as the player. We see that this doorway is closed. Click it to open it, and voila. Let's quickly talk about combat because I think that's one of the, the most important aspects of Fantasy Grounds. So it has this nifty thing called the combat tracker, which keeps track of your initiative, um, keeps track of all the all the PCs, enemies, their current effects. So I mentioned before that you can search for specific bad guys. Let's have a white dragon. A Galabrezu. And a couple of Minotaur skeletons. So you can see it's super easy to build an encounter. I'm just dragging NPCs over onto the combat tracker. So there are character sheets that are built in. So when I double click this wizard, we can see that she has a fully functional character sheet. All of these things you can uh, roll. And this includes the main page, their skills, all their abilities, and again all these red dragon heads are links so that you can read each of these. Their inventory, so you can quickly access each item in the inventory, see all of the stats for it, even check out the image if you want to. Uh, minor things, notes, log, actions. So any of the items, once you have something in your inventory that is a weapon, it will show up here. You can keep track of your spell slots here. Um, you have all of your spells. So let's say that we want to cast Ice Storm. We can click this link to view all the details of Ice Storm, or we can just look at the quick summary. So we know that it's a, a radius. So here's a tool called pointers. Um, we've got our 20 foot circle, line it up with our bad guys. Okay, we know we're targeting them. Um, we can remove it. We can t choose which enemies we're targeting. Now we're going to force them all to make dexterity saves. I'm going to close this for a moment. Um, so now it'll roll all the dice, uh, add all of the bonuses, and with this green die here, you can see that the Galabrezu actually has uh, advantage on this roll because it has magic resistance. So now that we see that the white dragon has failed, Galabrezu succeeded, Minotaur failed, and the other Minotaur failed. All right, now let's roll for damage. Okay, so we rolled 22 damage. Um, there were two different types of damage. So we also see that there was 27 damage dealt to the Minotaur. The Minotaur is actually vulnerable to cold, so it did, uh, it doubled the cold damage. There was six damage done to the Galabrezu because it partially resisted it. It has resistance. Uh, and then there was five damage done to the white dragon because it was also resistant to it. So you can see how Fantasy Grounds can build a huge amount of efficiency into combat, uh, especially when it comes to doing multiple damage types against multiple enemies that have different resistances. So this can really speed up combat a lot and allow you to run uh, more complex encounters more easily. And it's also just nice having all of your tools in one platform instead of trying to like bounce back and forth between different browsers and uh, physical books and looking things up. By the way, I'm not sponsored by them at all. I'm just a huge fan, so thank you, Smiteworks. All right, so that's combat from the player side, from the dungeon master's side. Let's say that we're going to attack with this dragon. The sheets for NPCs look a bit different. Um, so here's a peek. Uh, here you could use cold breath. Any text that is highlighted means that Fantasy Grounds has parsed it, and it is now actionable. 
So if you're going to use your cold breath on the wizard, you can just double click that highlighted text or drag and drop it into the chat. All right. So the wizard fails their constitution save. Bad day. <laughs> so that is 69 cold damage. Um, and we can see that the wizard is hurting. Their health is dropped because if I didn't already mention this, that combat tracker keeps track of everyone's HP um, and all of the effects that they are currently under. So really cool stuff. So although most of the functionality is built into the character sheets, there are die that you can roll. Um, you can just drag them, throw them into the, into the window. You can choose how many to roll. Array. You can also do modifiers, um, any modifier that you want, uh, be that positive or negative. You can do that on normal die rolls or in, uh, in the character sheets. Let's go through the buttons first. So PCs, you can have an unlimited number of PCs. I did mention that there is a character wizard to help you uh, build your character piece by piece. And all of the facets of uh, the things that are in your modules, so let's say you have something special from Xanathar's Guide or whatever, uh, that's going to be automatically baked in um, or accessible for you to use in building your character. Tables. I love tables. All right, let's go through some of the spiciest ones. So let's go through a basic one. Here is a table from Xanathar's Guide. Like I mentioned, when you have a module, all of the tables will come here. Um, we can roll right on this table of all the very rare uh, major items. All right, and we got a rod of the Pact Keeper plus three. And like I said, everything is linked, so you can always open this up and take a peek at it. We can actually take book tables and put them into our own tables. So here's a major items table for any of the major, uh, major items of any rare, rarity except legendary. Um, and then we can take this table and nest it into an overall loot table. So now when I roll this, it will roll one to four times on the major items table and one to four times on the minor items table. What does this look like? And it will create a parcel. A parcel is a package of, uh, of items that you can give to players. Okay, so now we have a parcel, um, obviously encounters can be quite useful. So here's an encounter table from the book. All right, we're going to put it into the chat actually. Okay, so now we, in the chat, we have a link. We click that, we have a, an encounter. So now we have randomly determined there's going to be five green hags. We can add this to the combat tracker. We can also throw this link down onto a map. And then there are lots of other fun tables. We all, you know, know and love our wild magic surges and whatnot. Huzzah. Or of course, for the features of a dungeon, let's say that you want some something to stir your imagination. All right, now we know the next room is gonna be an armory. And then we can also edit this, add in our own details, and then take this link and throw it down on the map so that it's right there accessible to us. Or throw it into another story entry if we're just kind of going through um, a, a story tab step at a, one step at a time. So every encounter that you build or every encounter that is already in the uh, any of the modules that you have will be accessible here. I should mention also that you can uh, you can quickly navigate through different groups inside of these. You can create encounter groups and then go straight to it. So here we have uh, the encounters from Volo's guide. And here we have um, an encounter from that I, that I made for myself. And as usual, these are all linked. So if 
if you want the info, you just click on it. Um, there's even a lot of background on all of these monsters. And of course, their images, which I always love. Okay, lastly, um, the party sheet is fabulous. So here you can have a breakdown of all of your characters. And I'm a huge fan of the inventory feature. So let's open up that loot table again. First, it's going to roll on this column. Then, to, let's say that, for example, we get a 69. We're going to roll on the, this gems table. We're going to roll on uh, one to four times on this table. And then roll on this table. Here we go. And it will just do its work, tell us what the results it's getting, and then show one parcel that takes into account everything that we get. Spicy. Okay, let's close out that table. Now we have this treasure hoard. Uh, tons of gold. We're going to actually delete this so that I don't ruin my ruin the economy of my game since this is actually going to go to my players. Um, so we have this currency. We also have all of these items. So we're going to drag this parcel into the party sheet inventory. And now all of these things are in the inventory. You can see that the, um, the currency is populated. Uh, as usual, these links, we can access all of them, check them out. And then we can say who this is going to. So you start typing in their name and it will uh, show who it's going to. Then when you hit distribute, whoever's name was there will receive it and the items will be divided up throughout the party. So we can now see that we have divided up our currency and that the wizard received a colored stone and the rogue received plate armor. Well, that's not very specific. What does that mean? Um, so if we open up the rogue's inventory, we can see plate armor. Yeah. So it's demon armor. The player doesn't know this because it's not, it has not been identified. Once you click that, now they're able to uh, now they're able to see all of this information and equip it. And then the last thing is XP. You can also award XP to the players and uh, have them level up automatically. Obviously, they'll still be able to customize uh, any aspects of their character once they level up. That is it for my overview of Fantasy Grounds. I hope it was helpful. Happy adventuring, my friends.